The Biden administration has begun an overhaul of America's Afghanistan strategy, and it finally wants India at the table. In a leaked letter to Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken outlined a series of steps to jumpstart the stalled peace process. One of them was a UN-backed conference of regional powers and stakeholders. We intend to ask the United Nations to convene foreign ministers and envoys from Russia, China, Pakistan, Iran, India and the United States to discuss a unified approach to supporting peace in Afghanistan. Now, Afghanistan has a troubled history with its neighbours in a complex web of competing interests and proxy powers. But increasingly, India is a new focus for diplomatic efforts to broker a lasting peace. The US has made clear that it welcomes New Delhi's engagement. India has fostered close ties to the Afghan government in recent years in the form of billions of dollars in aid and development. Last month, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave his support to a peace process that is led, owned and controlled by Afghanistan. And joining me now from Delhi for more is Shubhajit Roy. He's an award-winning journalist and reports on India's foreign relations for the Indian Express newspaper. Shubhajit, welcome. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi wants the peace process to be Afghan-led and Afghan-controlled, as does the U.S. State Department. How does the current proposal from Antony Blinken involving six nations make it so? Well, uh, Biresh, you know, the, uh, the uh, Indian position has always been that the Afghan peace process should be Afghan-owned, Afghan-led, and Afghan-controlled. And it also had, you know, about three or four red lines, uh, one being uh, there should be reduction in violence, women's rights should be respected, and constitutional, uh, you know, uh, principles should be observed. Now, uh, in that, India is finally part of the negotiating table in, uh, in, on, on the path towards peace in Afghanistan. This has been a, a U.S.-led proposal, which, uh, which was uh, revealed last week uh, through a letter by the U.S. Secretary of State. And now uh, India is expected to be finally be part of the table uh, after uh, being on the sidelines for almost... Uh, a uh, couple of decades now. So what does India bring to the table, Shubhajit? Uh, well, India has invested in Afghanistan in, in its reconstruction and redevelopment uh, in, a, in a big way, in a major way in the last two decades since, uh, you know, 2001, uh, after the 9-11 attacks. And uh, it spent close to $3 billion in the reconstruction and redevelopment. And uh, it has developed that constituency very carefully because, uh, you know, it essentially wants to counter uh, Pakistan's influence in Afghanistan, which uh, has been a problem for India. From India's perspective, uh, terrorism emanating out of uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and the cross-border terrorism has been a major security challenge. Uh, if you remember, uh, about two or three decades back, when uh, after the Afghan war uh, sort of uh, ended, the the uh, elements, the terror elements from uh, the uh, from from the Afghan border, Afghan territory, they moved to Kashmir. So that has been a major security challenge for India. So India has has wanted that it should be involved in. Uh, securing Afghanistan's peace and prosperity so that it is able to, uh, right. uh, you know, have a say and not be on the sidelines. You said India wanted to counter Pakistan's uh, influence, but then India will find itself sitting at the talks table with Pakistan and with China, two countries with whom relations haven't always been the best, let's just put it that way. And you also have Russia, which has been a traditional Indian ally who is expected to be at the talks table, but wasn't apparently too happy with India being part of this process. So I'm just wondering here, how do these six nations get together despite these nations having divergent interests? Well, you've, uh, you know, uh, hit the nail uh, at, the, at the right spot. You know, uh, what has happened is, although the countries have expressed it, their position that uh, it should be Afghan-led, Afghan-owned, and Afghan-controlled, but all the processes have been led, controlled, and, 
you know, owned by other players, other actors in, in the region. And that has been a major challenge for Afghanistan. Uh, and the peace process now, if it has to take off, all the regional players, whether they see eye to eye with each other, whether uh, be it India versus Pakistan or India versus China or Russia versus US, uh, all the countries have to have the stakes, have to have the skin in the game for uh, the peace process to move forward in a, in a, a pragmatic, in a feasible manner. And that is the major challenge for this peace process, which uh, has been fragile, as you know, in the last uh, year or so, that has been very evident. Um, you speak to the people in the Afghan government as well. I wonder how uh, Afghan government officials uh, view the involvement of so many nations in a peace process that is meant to benefit them. Yes. Uh, you're absolutely right. Afghan government has always wanted it, uh, uh, it, the peace process to be led by them. But uh, unfortunately, as the realities stand on the ground, uh, they, are, they are one uh, entity, uh, one player in, this, in, the, in the mix, the Taliban and as well as the Americans uh, having cut a deal last year. Now, more, uh, more uh, countries and more stakeholders are now in the game. And uh, they see, some they see as not so benign influence, and some they feel can contribute to a, a sort of a positive atmosphere for all the constitutional gains that they've acquired over the last two decades. Shubhajit Roy, we'll leave it there for the time being, but thank you so much for joining us.